In today's video, I'm going to show you three chess hacks from a game of Magnus Carlsen that has the potential to raise your rating to 1800 or even higher. And although these chess hacks are incredibly powerful, anyone can under understand them, anyone at any rating. These are really, really insightful uh, tricks and ways to become a very strong chess player. Let's jump right in. This was a game Magnus played against Anish Giri in 2020. And Giri has white, Magnus has black, and Giri begins with e4 and Magnus played c5. Now, in this position, he said of this game later that he was playing the man and not the position. Now, that's the first chess hack, that you want to understand your opponent. Now, obviously, if you've never played them before, don't know who they are, you can't use this particular hack, but in most cases, particularly in a tournament, you can look at previous games, and sometimes online even, you've seen the opponent before, you learn their tendency. So in this first hack is you study your opponent, learn their tendencies, and take advantage of them. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, e6, and then Anish Giri takes on c6, which is a good move. It makes perfect sense. He's creating a weakness of doubled pawns on the c file. d3, knight to e7, h4. When you play knight to e7, you're often aiming to bring the knight to g6. So he plays h4, so when the knight lands there, Giri can irritate it with h5. So to stop that, Carlson plays h5 first. Now e5. Geary's playing a very good game. He's taking advantage of these colored weaknesses of the dark of the dark squares. He's got the g5 square and now the d6 square, and Magnus can't let that square stay uh, vulnerable like that. So he goes ahead and allows his pawns to be weakened. He literally allows a weakness because he knows Geary's strengths and weaknesses. e d6, knight g6, knight f to d2, uh, moving the same piece twice in the opening, maybe knight b to d2 was the better move. After bishop d6, knight c4, bishop b7, queen to e2. White seems to be doing fairly well, but Geary plays the other knight to d2. Bishop takes d6 and knight to c4, hitting this bishop on d6, and the bishop goes back to e7. Now, to look at the position, I would say Geary was clearly better. Uh, Magnus has these terrible pawn weaknesses, and although he has the two bishops, uh, White's knights have nice squares to be deployed at, particularly the knight at c4, but we'll see how this goes. Knight to c3, bishop to a6, Magnus aims his bishop at the knight on c4, and now queen to f3. And here Magnus plays an interesting move. Uh, he must have known something about the psychology of Geary when he played this move. He did say after the game, uh, the key was not making the best moves necessarily, but making the best moves against this particular opponent. He plays bishop takes c4. Now, it turns out the best move for white is to just retake the bishop, which seems obvious. And after something like knight e5, queen e4, queen d4, you do have an equal uh, position. Uh, but Geary plays a move that seems the most obvious to me, and that is to play queen takes c6 check. Basically, by delivering a check, you grab the pawn on c6, and then later you can take the bishop. But this turns out not to be the most accurate move. And look, Carlson plays the king to f8, so you think Geary would be very happy in this position. dc4. Okay, so the queen side is a mess. But now, Carlson is able to grab the pawn on h4. And notice Geary's not yet castled. Now he does that now. He castles, but Keep an eye on this g2 pawn. For our next two hacks, that's going to be fairly, fairly relevant. The knight goes back to f5. Carlson is aiming at the d4 square, so Geary plays knight to e2 to stop it from getting into that square. Rook to c8, activating the rook by attacking the queen at c6. The queen moves to a4. Now, this is very important. This is the second hack, and this is something I think uh, many players need to hear. Uh, and it's a, the basic principle is asking yourself the question, what side of the board should I play on? Uh, in one of Jeremy Silman's uh, editions of How to Reassess Your Chess, he says that every player should ask that question, what side of the board am I supposed to play on? Uh, he got rid of that question in his most recent uh, edition, but he should not have gotten rid of that question. It's a great question. So we look at Black's position. Uh, his queen side is a mess. So he's not going to play on the queen side. And the center is open, but there are very few targets here. It is very clear the side of the board that Magnus is going to play on is the king side. Everything from this point forward 
is going to be aimed at the king's side because that's the only place he can generate play. The position is telling him, play on the king's side. So he chooses a side of the board to play on and then energizes all of his forces in that direction. And that will explain moves that might seem strange at first sight. Rook to c7. <clears throat> it defends the a7 pawn, but prepares to double on the d file. Bishop to f4. Hits the rook, and now rook to d7. He controls d1 for the time being. White cannot contest that. But then uh, c3 is played, which does two things. It allows the queen to control d1, and it also keeps the knight out of uh, d4. As it turns out, the best option for white was knight to g3. A very strange move. Very hard to find. Uh, because black is able to then play his knight to the very natural d4 square, which he was trying to prevent. But after rook f e1, h4, knight e4, and then c3, it looks like white is uh, safe and is doing uh, okay. But c3 is played first. Now, we talked about which side of the board to play on. If black is going to play on the king side, what's the best move to advance on the king side? That's right, g5. And believe it or not, after g5, black has a clear, unquestionable advantage, even with all the problems on the queen side, by playing on the side of the board that he's supposed to be playing on, Magnus now has a clear edge. Uh, the bishop goes to h2, then just h4. The bishop instead, uh, rook a to d1 was played first, excuse me. Uh, he can't take the bishop because then the rook would, or the queen would take on that square. Uh, so rook to d1 is played first. Rook takes d1, hitting the queen. Uh, now, here's the third hack. And anyone who's re read The Art of Attack by Vukovic will be familiar with this. When you are attacking the opponent's king, as obviously he's doing by attacking the, the king side, you want to pick the weakest square in front of that king and attack that with all your might. So which is the weakest square in front of white's king. As it turns out, it's the g2 square. It is only defended by the king, and it is also most easily accessible by the black pieces. So when Magnus runs his queen away from the threat of this rook, where does he go to attack g2? That's right, queen to a8. Now that looks like a strange move. Why are you moving your queen all the way to the corner of the board? Well, it's so he can attack the weakest square in Geary's position the g2 square. So we've got psychology of the opponent, we've got playing on the correct side of the board, targeting the weakest square in front of your opponent's king. The bishop goes to c7, h4, f3, obviously h4, the idea is to further attack g2, the knight can come into h4 to collapse the g2 square, f3, and then h3, and just like that, the game is over. Anish Giri resigned in this position. That's how fast it was, watch this. Queen to a8, bishop moves, h4, f3 to block the queen's diagonal, and h3, and it's a resignable position. And here, here's why. If white plays, say, g4 to attack the knight, just queen takes on f3, and that's it. Can't take the knight because of mate. And let's say he plays a move like knight to g3, well then knight to h4, and you're coming in even more strongly on these weak uh, squares. Queen to c2 to defend g2, then queen to c6 hits the bishop, bishop to e5, f6, and where is the bishop going to go if it goes to b8, then hg2, and obviously everything around the king is collapsing, and that is it. And if gh3, again, queen f3, and the game is over. So really an incredible lesson for Magnus Carlsen in how to attack. And if you exercise these ideas in your game, you are really going to be very successful. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.